Hey guys, welcome back to the Vintage Drum Restoration Garage and uh, this is going to conclude this series on the out of round oversized Radio King snare drum that I've been working on for the last few weeks. So I hope you enjoy the final um, segment here. It's just going to include the staining of the drum, um, all the edge work that I've done, um, buffing out, and the complete installation of all the parts. So this will um, show you how the drum turned out and hope you enjoy this. Stick around. Okay, look, I got my stain out and I've got this Watco, which is a quality stain. You know, I've never used this stuff. So um, I'm just going to, I mixed it up real good. And I've got this Minwax, another dark walnut. And I've just got a test board here. So I thought, you know, I'll just, I'll just test them out. See what I think about the coverage. And I'll apply it with a, uh, a little brush here and wipe it off after a, a minute or whatever. And see what I think. So here's this uh, Minwax. Make a strip of that. And then uh, I'll just uh, grab some off the top of this because it's kind of spilling over. And I'll go over the top of this board here and see what I think. Uh, this is this wood I'm testing it on is not maple. And it's uh, looks like red oak to me but just for the test purposes we'll uh, you know it looks like the Watco is a little bit lighter <clears throat> let me just get a, uh, a rag and wipe these off real quick here Yeah, see the, uh, the Watco is not as dark. I think I'm going to go with this darker one. I, I kind of like it better. So, I'll just show you the way I'm going to do it. And I don't want to go over it too heavy. Because I don't want it to spill in the inside. Make sure your hands are your left hands clean. Because if you're going to apply it, um, and I'll sand, I'll uh, I've cleaned the shell with a tack cloth. Get all the dust off of it, and I'm going to just stir this one more time, man. Get it all, get all the colors in it. Nice heavy coat of it. Be careful around the the holes. Don't want it to go on the inside of the shell. And you can apply this with a cloth too. It's not a. It just happens to be what I'm doing. Just want to make sure it's not getting on the inside. I don't want any on the inside. This brush is not that great, but it'll. It'll work.
drag some of this stuff down here. Hope you guys can see this. I've also sprayed this uh, on as well. I've also sprayed it in the past and that works really good. If you want it to be a real dark coat and you want to almost leave it with the stain on the shell rather than wiping it, that works pretty good. So let me just let this sit for a bit. I'm not worried about the edges because I'm going to redo the edges anyway. So that should uh, not be a problem. I'm just going to get it off there real quick. I don't want any on the edges that I don't need to have. I don't see any on the inside. That's good. Let me let this sit here for a few minutes and I'll bring you back. Yeah, so I said let that sit for five minutes. Let's uh, let's just wipe it off. See what we think. I mean, it looks pretty cool. Not as dark as I would have liked it, but... Um, maybe I'll go over it with the cloth. And... Uh, maybe that'll do better. Let's have a... Let's have a test run on that. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm filling the, I've got this, uh, well, first of all, I've got this uh, stain on the drum, but right now I'm, I'm taking some time and pushing this glue into these cracks. You just kind of push it in there, keep pushing it in there, fill it up. And then later it'll probably be a little bit low and you might want to go over it again. I've done this area here. I'll just do this one crack here that you can see. It's not a crack, it's a separation. So I'll just put some glue on there and just keep pushing it in that crack or separation. And that'll uh, strengthen the shell. And it won't come apart again. Because it's, it's done contracting and expanding for the most part. Wood always does. But for the most part, after 75 years, it's pretty much got its shape. There's another small one here.
and I just keep going over these uh, cracks until I see that they're full and I keep calling them cracks they're not cracks they're separations anyway um, and then in the meantime when these are drying I uh, I'm going over the shell with more stain because I want to get it kind of a dark finish and it's, it's pretty dark right now but not quite as dark as I want it so I just keep going over it and I just uh, keep alternating between doing this gluing and the staining and before you know it it's going to be done so I'm going to get a wet, wet rag clean this up a little bit and let it dry okay so let me show you where we're at with this uh, drum here um, this is the finish I'm being told I'm gonna get by this wood this wood is saying I don't want to get any darker so I mean that's an okay finish I, I guess it's all right sort of looks like a Gretsch uh, finish from this from the 70s sort of but let me show you a drum that I've got an original Slingerland drop my gun here uh, this is an original Slingerland probably from the late uh, 30s 40s I'm not sure I'm trying to get a, the best light to show you this is an original finish you can see it's a little bit scarred up and everything but it's a really great drum um, that's probably the best light I can get for you um, solid maple shell and I thought about this years ago and I I was always uh, looking at furniture and I thought well how are they making this maple look like walnut and I thought well and getting such an even coat and I thought well maybe what they're doing is they're spraying the stain on it and just leaving it not wiping it off and you'll notice with this you're not seeing a whole lot of grain so much as you're seeing more of a a coating so what I thought I'd do here is I'd go ahead and experiment and since I want a darker finish like this one isn't that a beautiful finish that is so gorgeous that I would uh, go ahead and right here on camera show you what I'm thinking and so what I'm gonna do is I'll fix you guys up here and I'll show you what I'm gonna do it's raining out I don't care I'm gonna spray anyway all right, so I've got my gun set up. That's just stain, straight stain in this drum. And I'm going to Let me, uh, I might have too much air on that. Let me just uh, turn the air down and try this again. One okay, so after a few attempts, I didn't get it on camera because I'm, you know, experimenting with what I want to get. I've got the air down really low on this because I just want to mist. That is uh, getting darker. That's um, looking a lot better with what I want and so let me just show you what I've got here I'll just I'll give you a, a, a view of a test piece I'll just give you a quick view of what I'm doing listen to the air very little air 
I don't know if you can see that. It looks like it's not, you're not able to see it. Hard to do this on camera. But this is better. I don't really want this in this in the shop, but look at that. If I just missed it, I'll get the color I want. See that? That's not a great representation, but the drum is, and I think that that's what they were doing. So I'm going to, it's a, it's not a great day for doing this, but it'll still work. It'd be better if the, the day was really warm and then it would dry real quick. But we deal with what we've got and I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so I kind of like what I'm getting here. And I'm going to, I'm going to let this dry a little bit and I'm going to do it again until I get the finish that I want. Because remember, I'm the only one who has to be satisfied. So uh, I'll bring you back. I'm going to let this dry a bit and um, we'll just keep going. Well, it's the next day and this is the finish I came up with that I think I can live with. Um, I thought it was pretty nice and it's a lot darker and I, I did spray it on. And um, of course it's not exactly like this one, but I wasn't trying to match it anyway. You're never going to get exact because Slingerland probably have their own mix. But um, I think this is quite nice. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to spray a, a, uh, just a tack coat of lacquer, nitrocellulose lacquer on there. And uh, start the process of clear coating. this sit in the sun for oh I don't know just uh, an hour or so maybe not even that and uh, let it uh, cure and I'll put a few coats on it before I do any wet sanding I'll bring it back okay that uh, I hit it with three coats of uh, clear nitrocellulose lacquer now I'm going to give it a, its first wet sand. I'm not going to go over this too much. I've done this in other videos. But um, basically, the first sand, you've got to be very careful not to go into the... You don't want to go down too low um, because you've got your... Well, your stain, and you'll, uh, you'll want to mess with the finish with the uh, color to go down too low, obviously. So I'm not going to go too low on this. I'm just going to give it a quick... I'm using this old 500 uh, grit paper. And I'm just going to go down a little bit and just get the top layer off of it. And then uh, and I'll, I'll shoot it again after I'm done. After it dries a bit. So I'm going to go all the way around and that's what I'm going to do. And I won't bore you with any more of that process. If you want to see some of that process, you can go back to some of my other videos. Okay? Be right back. Okay, I told you, you don't want to go down too low. Well, look. I went down too low. Right there. 
and right there. So when this thing dries, I'm going to hit it with a little bit of um, stain. Try to cover up those spots. That's what you want to try to avoid. So whenever you go through those spots like that, it's important that you get your stain out after it dries real well, real well and uh, go over the whole shell. Don't try to just dot them in because it'll come out. Uh, you'll see it. So I went over the whole shell and um, now I'm going to start stacking up a few more coats of uh, clear coat. Okay, what I'm doing today is this shell has had, um, this is the third wet sand, okay? And um, now what I'm doing is I'm getting all of the, I had something called fish eye. Uh, in a finish. That's where you get a lot of little circles in the finish. Probably from the oil-based uh, stain I was using. Maybe it wasn't completely dry. And then it causes a lot of what you call, what you see here is uh, see all this fish eye looking stuff in the finish. You'll see it in here. So what I'm doing is I'm slowly sanding that out. You don't want to do that all at once. This side has been sanded out. You still see some of these little spots here. And I'm slowly getting those out through each stage of wet sands. Um, so you'll, see, you'll still see some here and there, a little bit. But I'm going to hit it with three more coats of lacquer after I'm all done here and I let it dry and we'll get all this these little fish eyes out each uh, a little bit more each stage of the game so I just wanted to get you aware of that I'll let you watch a little bit more of what I'm doing for wet sanding I've got a 500 grit paper and I just have it in some water and you want to use a sanding block and just put your paper around the block and pretty simple just make sure you're not out here on the edges too much and you just go in a circular pattern And just do small areas at a time, you know. Uh, it's, you don't want to start working all over the shell. You just start in a small area like this. Then I wipe it down. And then I can see, see those little fish eyes? Then I know where to work. And where not to. So I'll dip my paper back in the water. And I'll go over that area again. And remember, I'm not trying to get all of those out all at once. Because if I do that, I could go through the finish. So that's probably all, well, all I'll do for that section there. And as I go from... Um, each... Uh, each time I lacquer then I'll go over it and slowly but surely I'll get all those fish eyes out I'm just gonna work my way around the shell and then I'll, uh, I'll report back to you and how things are going each time my do my sand I am uh, restaining every time right over the lacquer um, I'm trying to get this thing a little bit more dark and um, it's hard to tell in this light I know but I'm trying to get you into the best light as I can it's not great sunlight but um, as you can see it's it's um, 
I've just stained it again. I'm going to let this dry for a few hours before I hit it with another coat of uh, lacquer. Okay, now we have three more coats of uh, acrylic lacquer, uh, lacquer on there. And uh, we're starting to see a very shiny, even coat. And uh, I'll do another wet sand on it and get any other indiscrepancies out of it. And we'll do another three coats. You just keep stacking them up. Hey, good morning. Um, let me show you where we're at on this drum here. It's been about 24 hours since I sprayed this. And um, we've gotten all the fish eyes out of it. It's pretty smooth now. And uh, we're going to go over it again. Uh, with maybe probably maybe a thousand grit or 800 whatever I find in there a pile of sandpaper something a lot lighter and get this thing um, to where it's super smooth well that's a better light sorry about that guys so I'll do that and I'll spray it again and I'll bring it back and let you see what I, what we've got. Yeah, I found some thousand grit. That's a, probably the next, uh, I have some 600, but I thought I'd go up to a thousand because it's a pretty smooth finish right now. I just want to get some of the grainy and some of the dust that was in the air yesterday i spray outside so it's not ideal but tends to work i'll just give you a quick shot of what i'm going to do here same thing as before around in circles panel by panel and then we'll have a look at it what I'm looking for on this particular phase of the sanding is I don't want to see any of these little shiny spots see that I'm trying to get away from all that. The edges here, I don't want to go too close to those. I, I will, but I, I, I want to get them dull. But the closer you get to the edge, you can start losing some um, finish. And we don't want to do that. So you got to be very careful around that. But mainly, I want to get these, any of these little spots here you see. Those are still little fish eyes, so I'm going to carry on, get those out, and I'll bring it. So, this is pretty much where I want to be with the whole drum. This is still just that same panel. You notice those little spots are going away. And the outer edge, I'm not, like I say, not too concerned with that right now. I'll get that in the final go. I just want to kind of do some build-ups of the uh, nitrocellulose lacquer and I'll continue around the shell and then I'll probably let it dry real good it's kind of a cold day but I can spray in the cold it's a little bit windy out probably about 10 mile an hour that's not great it brings up the dust but uh, we'll, we'll see so I'm pretty happy with uh, everything so far um, I'd be ready to uh, give it another shot of lacquer but on this joint here this lap joint or scarf joint whatever you want to 
let's call it it's you'll see here that you're still getting some shine in this spot here so I'm, I'm building that up slowly um, just a little down there too so we're pretty good all the way across but this is what I'm trying to build up so I usually start spraying here and work my way around and then spray it again on that particular run so it's building up fine I'm just going to keep working on it that's a thousand grit and that's uh, looking pretty good so I'll let it um, you know dry and warm up a little bit outside and then we'll we'll hit it again and just keep going from here this uh, drum has been drying well I mean since the wet sand uh, for about a half hour or so so I have confidence that it's ready and like I said earlier a while back um, between each wet sand after every three uh, clear coats I'm going ahead and putting an applying another uh, stain on it because I really want this thing to be real dark so here I go again another stain Put another coat of stain on it, maybe a little more here. And that way I get uh, a little darker finish. I'm trying to get as close as I can to that other one over there. I think what they did on that Slingerland drum over there is they mixed some mahogany. It's a redder. A more red stain with the walnut to get that more red coat or red stain it's dark walnut but it's got some kind of a red tint to it as well so but that's not what I'm going for here I just thought I'd act like I know what I'm talking about and baffle you baffle you with my brilliance <laughs> so there's that and I'll let that dry, you know, real good. That looks pretty darn good. I like that finish. Isn't that beautiful? So we'll see. It's getting more smooth and more smooth and more smooth. So we'll just keep going at it. Okay, so it's been two weeks since I've... Uh, done anything to this shell I've let it uh, dry and shrink and I haven't done anything to it and the finish is quite nice a little dusty and I'm going to do a finished sand on it but probably 1200 maybe even 1500 and then I'm going to buff it out but right now is I want to concentrate on these edges so I'm going to run it over my board and true up the edges I'll show you what I do there I gotta make a new board. It's uh, this one's getting pretty bad. So you can see where the beds are and we want to see this flat so we've got some low spots here and here so I want to get it take it down to where it's flat all the way around
Looks good on that side. Now it's a little low here still. Still low here. Look at how much we've taken it down here. It's low over here. You can see how low it is over in here. Look at how much we've taken off here. It's typical of these older shells to be low in, in the, so many spots and high in the other. So we'll take it down where it's real flat. Getting closer. Okay, I've got that all flattened and trued so it's completely flat around the whole shell both sides and I take a piece of 400 sandpaper uh, this one's been used I'm, sh I'm just showing you what I've done and I go around this whole edge on the drum around the whole edge trying to get me get a basically below the the edge line because if I sand this way the clear coat will start chipping away so you kind of ease this whole edge around the whole thing whole shell with the pizza 400 and um, ease that whole edge around both sides the way I've done here Don't sand this way, sand this way. Because uh, this, this finish is really brittle and it'll come right away from the shell and you'll be left with not such a pretty picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on these edges. I'm going to start uh, reshaping the edges with a file. I'll show you how I do that. done this on, in other videos but I might as well just show you what I'm doing here um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new truing board with a piece of marble I'm going to try to find a, a piece of flat marble and glue my sandpaper to it 
soon when I find one. And here's my trusty file. It's, uh, it's rounded on this side. This is the heavy side. And then I'll go to the other side, the rounded side, to finish it up. So I'm always looking here at this edge. And you can see right here, this is the, this is the spot where it's got the least to do to take off, obviously. So I'm just going to start here. And work my way around with the heavy side of the file. I don't want these edges real sharp, but I can ease them over once I uh, go to a uh, sandpaper finish on them. This is just the rough cut here. I hope this uh, is, you see here, this is where I'm ending up. And I've just got probably about an, not quite even a sixteenth of edge here. Well, I mean an eighth. It's about an eighth right now. So I'm just going to go around the shell like this and I'll bring you back. Okay, I'm trying to get you focused in here. So I've gone around the whole. This is the snare side. Just going over that right now. I've, I've used the rough part of this file. I'm going to go to the smooth side. I'm starting here at this bed. I've cleaned up the bed. Left it basically the same. And I'm just smoothing out all and getting my edge using my eyes right around this very edge here and I'll just kind of roll the edge over a little bit meaning the inner edge here just kind of roll it over a little bit this is where you've got to use your eyes right around this edge here to not go over into it the uh, here's the other bed here I'm just gonna clean it up I'm gonna go this over this way I'm not gonna go back because I could chip the clear coat I'm just going over this real quick here just to give it a nice new clean look there's some glue in there you can hear it I can hear that glue. And I'll have to uh, fill in a few little spots like right along in here. You can see a little bit of and right there. Fill those in with a little bit of glue when we're all done. really windy over here in Phoenix today. Try to get you uh, dialed, dialed in a little bit closer. Hopefully that's um, focusing in. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go over it with some 220 on my block. I'm not going to go out over the edge. I'm just going to lean the paper inwards. Just going to kind of clean it up. 
I'm on the bed right now. Now I'm going out of the bed here. Just trying to get up all the little imperfections out of it from the file. This paper is never going out here on this edge. Okay, we're just coming up on the other bed here and work our way around. And for my final um, go around here, I just take the paper, fold it in half, and I, I'm able to feel with my thumb where I'm at. And I take out, I'm pretty much working down in this area here never really going over to the lip of the uh, bearing edge. My finger is holding it away here. And I'm just going around and cleaning up any scratches, you know. Um, And this is a pretty worn out piece of paper, which is good, so it's, you know, it's probably down to 320 at this point. Seeing a lot of scratches right in this area here. I'm just going to work my way around like that. As you can see, there's a sizable amount of uh, wood shavings on the workbench here. And here's the edge. I want to show you what I've got here. I've just got a few spots to fill in with some glue. It's very smooth all the way around. The edges feel really nice. There's a few spots right here. I'm going to fill them in after I do the batter side. I'm working on that right now. Okay, we finished the edges. We have uh, wet sanded the, given it the final wet sand with a thousand, uh, 1200 grit actually, and I'm um, giving it the final buffing right now. We're going to go ahead and give it a uh, another buffing with uh, Wheelmark Eliminator, which is a uh, liquid ebony, and I'll uh, show you that process. Okay, we've changed the pad to uh, 
finer like lamb's wool sort of a pad. I use this liquid ebony which you cannot get anymore. This company went out of business 20 years ago. It's one of the best wheel remover, uh, wheel mark removers around. And no one makes a good one anymore. This is something I found at a garage sale. Now I, uh, I use some uh, liquid pledge. Good old furniture polish. And uh, just spray it on there and use my uh, very soft terry cloth rag and go over the whole thing. Just give it a nice going over. And there's your finish that you get. Um, pretty happy with that. And I'm going to uh, probably tomorrow I'll uh, start assembling this drum. Someone was asking me in the comments uh, a while back about what would I do the inside of a drum and, and some drums I, if they're bare wood on the inside, I, I will use this Johnson's Pace Whack. It's meant for uh, wood floors and it kind of gives them some, uh, you know, it gives them a good little coating of uh, wax on the inside. And, 
just kind of rejuvenates the wood. And I'm uh, going to go over this whole thing with this wax. All over the inside. And you know what? I might even do the outside too. Especially these bearing edges, I do those. So I'll go over the outside today and let this dry overnight because you're supposed to let it dry. And uh, then you just wipe it off with a cloth later. But it'll give it a nice sheen and protect the wood. We're uh, starting to assemble this drum. Got the badge on and uh, the lugs, and I'm going to put the throw off on next and install the wires and the heads. And this thing should be up and running today. Okay, we've got the wires on the drum. These are the original wires, and uh, there's the throw off mechanism in action. Listen to it. Works really nice. We're going to put the tone control on next and top head. This will be the conclusion of this three part series on this out of round oversized Radio King drum that has taken these last few weeks to complete. Hope you had enjoyed this series. If you want to comment or uh, have any ideas for future products that would be great and subscribe and uh, you'll know what's coming up you'll get updates on what's going on at the vintage drum restoration garage and until then take care